Hello and welcome to Susie B Living's Gardening by the Moon series. So it was a lovely day today and I'm sitting outside and it is lovely to be bringing you this schedule from outside. Yay! Okay, so today is the 14th of April, Sunday the 14th of April and we had a flowers day today. So we continue that theme tomorrow. Tomorrow, Monday the 15th of April is our flowers day. And by flowers, I mean any flower in the garden, ornamental, any flower on the allotment, any flower on a shrub, um, any edible flower. So edible flowers include um, globe artichokes, uh, cauliflowers, calabrese or broccoli as well. They're all edible flowers. So that is what flowers means on the moon phase calendar. Okay, so my little schedule always starts with what am I going to sow? I don't have any edible flowers to sow at the moment. I do have them to transplant, but I don't have them to sow. However, you could start um, directly sowing your hardy annuals. And when I say hardy annuals, I mean things like marigolds, poppies, um, nigella, that's a, that's a um, hardy annual. And you can now directly sow them in the ground so it is actually warm enough and you always know it's warm enough because kind of more tender things start coming up especially if they're self-seeding and I've noticed that quite a few little um, tomato seedlings are starting to come up so it means that the soil, <laughs> the soil has warmed up. So the other thing that you can also do is you can also sow your perennials. I would sow them in modules or in little pots because those seeds have a tendency to be a little bit more expensive. Things like hollyhocks, delphiniums, echinacea, they can all be sown now as well. Um, if you want to transplant anything uh, and you have any half hardies like cosmos, you can put those out now. Just remember where you are though, because if, you, if we get another frost, you're going to have to cover them up with something. Um, I'm not going to say we're not going to get a frost because I mean, how do I know? And uh, you never know, we've had frosts in May. So um, just remember that, okay? Um, the other thing is you can also put out your sweet peas. So if you grew sweet peas from seed, you can start putting those out. Sweet peas are pretty tough. I mean, if you grew them in the autumn and you overwintered them like in a greenhouse, they're pretty tough. So um, they should be fine now. If you didn't grow them from seed, there are many companies and many garden centers that have sweet pea seedlings as well. And really, it's definitely worth putting some in because they are just so beautiful. And every year I always say, oh, I'm not gonna do sweet peas anymore. And then oh, I always throw a few seeds in and I'm always very, very happy that I did because they are just stunning and the smell is divine. Um, the other thing that you also can get going is if you haven't, um, if you've got dahlia tubers and you want to start them off, start them off as soon as possible. I always start mine in pots. Um, as you can see here, I've got one that's actually sprouting and these are extras because the dahlias that I had in my kind of flower border here in the back garden didn't make it through the winter. The ones at the front did make it. I left all my dahlias in the ground. The ones at the front are really fantastic, but the front of the house is south facing. So the ground gets really baked. It gets very, very um, dry in the summer. The back is different, different story. So I've got a few extra dahlias that I started off in pots. Um, the other thing that you can start off in pots is any other um, summer bulb. I've also got some begonias that I've got in pots. I've got my lilies. Um, I've got some calla lilies as well. And they will, if you start them off in pots, just in some normal compost, they get off um, very, 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 very quickly. And then I, like I've mentioned before, Whenever I get a new bulb of some sort or a new tuber, the first year I always um, have it in a, in a pot so I can move it around. There's my little friend that I'm looking at. Blackie, where are you Blackie? 
Oh, they're so lovely. Um, and then in the next the next year, I plant them in the garden. Um, so that is another thing that you can do for transplanting. If you do that as well, and if you start your bulbs in pots like in their first year, and you then want to um, plant them out, it's good time to plant them out. Also, if you had any bulbs that you had inside that you forced, like hyacinths, they do really well outside in the ground. Um, Bulbs like um, paper whites are not really hardy, so if you do plant them in the ground, you might lose them. You might be better off to actually dry the bulbs out and keep them for next year. I put mine in the garden, and if they come up, they come up, and if they don't, I don't really care. Um, so weeding and maintenance is my next category. If you've got any lavender, now is a really, really good time to give it a good chop and a good prune. Um, you can cut back into about, I would say, just to be safe, about an inch or maybe inch and a half into the actual top, the green of it, what they call the green of it. Um, and you can do that now and give them a really, really nice prune. Um, make sure that your climbing roses are all tied in nicely. I notice I've got one, one rose that's flopping off the wall. So I need to go and tie that back in because roses are going to be flowering soon. And if you've got the late flowering clematis, which is called the viticella clematis, they're the ones with the really, um, the smaller blooms. They're absolutely gorgeous. I've got one down here in my soft fruit area. Um, they can all be cut back now quite hard. I usually say to about knee height, cut them right back and then um, just spread them out and they will go for it. So that's my weeding and maintenance. And then feeding, I usually look at anything that looks like it needs a feed. So anything that's flowering, I'll give it a bit of a feed. Any bulbs that are finished like nar Narcissus, I give them a bit of a feed as well. And I just go around and think, okay, well, what needs a feed here? What doesn't? Um, and that is my feeding. So that's Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, so Tuesday the 16th and Wednesday the 17th of April is Leaves Day. Now this is our first Leaves Days for the month so far. I mentioned this right at the beginning of the month, but um, I said if you've got any leaves, leaves to sow, sow them and that was at the end of April. Well here is your first set of leaves days. We have it coming up again um, later on. Let me just double check that but I'm pretty sure that we do. Yes we have it coming up again later on. So we've got two days. Leaves days are always really busy for me because we eat a lot of leaves. So let's talk about what I'm going to be sowing. I am going to be sowing um, another batch of spinach and I I want this spinach to grow quite fast because then um, I will need the bed for something else. But because my first batch of spinach didn't really work and I've only got another batch that needs to be transplanted out, which is what I'm doing in my transplanting, I thought I would like to have another batch of spinach. So I've chosen the Santa Cruz and I've chosen Mikado. They're both... Um, what they call slow or no bolters. So I'm going to um, experiment and see if they are slow or no bolters. Um, I'm only doing 20 uh, modules of each of those. Um, the next thing is my next succession of lettuce. So I am going to go mainly for my Salanova lettuce and my Salanova lettuce is looking absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you a few of them um, that I've got here in the greenhouse. Uh, so I have got um, soy rat in the greenhouse, or is it barlack? Soy rat and barlack are very similar in the way that they grow. I think the one in the greenhouse is barlack. And um, I'll just, I'll show you a few of my lettuce that I've got in the greenhouse as I talk about these. So I am gonna sow um, Haflex, Navara, which is my favourite. It's not a Salanova, but it's my favourite lettuce. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous, and I'll show you that because I do have that. I've actually got it here in the kitchen garden. I'll show you that. Um, 
um, extranet, which is um, the kind of crinkly green salanova, soy rat, I'll do some more of those, and richia is one of my favourites. It's like the green version of Lola Rossa, and I'm going to do some Lola Rossa as well. But I'm only doing five of each of these because I want um, quite a variety, but um, I don't want many of them. And these are going to be then harvested as whole heads. The other thing that I'm going to do is my canasta. I love the Meravalia di canasta. Um, it's one of my favourite lettuces for the summer, and I'm going to be doing 10 of those. Now is the time I sow chard. So I have still got chard in my kitchen garden here and um, it's come back absolutely beautifully. The, the um, cold hit it quite hard uh, and the frost hit it quite hard and now it's come back beautiful. So I haven't pulled it out at all. But I want to do some more because when this is, this is going to go to seed um, and when it goes to seed I want to have a next lot. So I'm going to do some more rainbow chard because rainbow chard is just nice. It's nice to have different colours. And I'm going to do my favourite chard, which is an Italian one called Barese. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. The stems are so soft. They're not hard like um, ch normal chard stems. Absolutely gorgeous. And I use it a lot as a spinach alternative because it's not as kind of irony as well as, as um, rainbow chard or forward hook or something like that. Um, I will be doing 20 of those each. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a few pots of just what I call cut and come um, lettuce, the lettuce mix that you just grow, um, all different types, and you cut it off and it comes again. And you normally can get about three, maybe four cuttings from it. I'm going to do some of that. That's my sowing on leaves days. Transplanting. So I've got some celery. My celery was really slow to get going, but now it's got going. And now I need to prick it out and I need to um, put it into modules and let it grow on. I've got two celery plants in the greenhouse behind me and we're still eating from those. They are nearly finished. Um, but if you haven't sown any celery yet this year, I would sow some Tuesday or Wednesday because that celery then can be like a main crop celery and it's not too late to sow celery. They will germinate very fast and then you just prick them out and they're so easy to grow. And really, I know that... The, um, they uh, have a tendency to be a bit stringy, but I just take the strings out. The celery that you grow is no comparison to the celery that you buy. Mind you, I say that about everything that I grow to eat. So I'm going to be doing um, some transplanting of celery. I've also got some lettuce that I need to prick out and pop those on as well. And I have some brassicas. So I've got some um, calets that need to be pricked out and pot, potted on. The calets that I've got already in modules are a, a bit slow. I'm gonna to have to put them here in the greenhouse and they will get going much more in the greenhouse. Um, what other brassicas? Oh, brassic, oh, just brassicas, red cabbage I've got. Um, I've got a few more kales, so yeah. Weeding and maintenance. Okay, so I have now a bed of kales on the allotment. I was just over at the allotment today, just having a look, seeing if anything needed the water, and they are doing really well, very happy. The only ones that are looking a little bit sad are the Pentland Brig, and I'm not sure why. I think it's because when I, pot, when I um, planted them out, they were already a little bit pot bound and I think they're sulking a little bit, but um, anyhow, they should be okay. So I've got some kale, I'll, I'll go over and have a look at the kales. Um, the celery in the greenhouse I need to give a little bit of a, a feed to. I've got the lettuces in the greenhouse that I need to um, have a look at and I have to start harvesting them because the lettuces are in my auto pot system. And um, the auto pot system is what I put my tomatoes in. And my tomatoes are ready to come out. 
Autopot is a, um, a system that is a uh, watering system that is gravity fed from a tank. So there's no pumps, there's no nothing, it's just gravity fed. I have the system in this big greenhouse and then I'm getting another system for my um, eight by six greenhouse. And when I get it, I'll show you how easy it is to set it up. Um, the other thing is I need to just check on my Asian greens. In my big uh, veggie pod, my Asian greens are all going um, flowering and going to seed. So I need to pick them all and, and eat them all. And feeding, again, I might give those kales a little bit of a feed. Um, and anything else that kind of looks as though it might need a little bit of a feed as well I will do that so that is Monday Tuesday and Wednesday of this coming week all done leaves days so um, thank you very much for watching uh, I did a talk this week um, and uh, I think that the ladies might be quite interested in doing a bit of moon gardening, moon phase gardening, which is very exciting. I mean, I just say, if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, what on earth is she talking about? Give it a go. Just give it a go. I always say I give anything a go once just to try it out. And, um, and thank you for the people who um, always comment on my, po on my um, videos and the questions that I get. I hope I'm answering them okay for you. And um, let me know how you're getting on. And if there's anything you need um, answering questions answered, let me know that as well. So I'll see you on Wednesday night for the rest of the week. And have a good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thumbs up would be nice. I always like a thumbs up because... <laughs> means that at least you're enjoying enjoying my what I'm doing and subscribe subscribe and then you will get my moon phase or my moot gardening by the moon's schedule and um, you won't ever feel as though you're out of control in with your gardening you'll always feel like you're on on time and on the schedule um, is helping you be on time and uh, yeah and you can relax <laughs> Thanks very much. I will see you next time. Bye.